Last week I spoke with your Democratic candidate for state attorney, Catherine Vogel. This morning I'm going to be speaking with your Republican candidate for state attorney, Mark Cole. Now he's been a practicing attorney since 1984 when he was working for the state attorney's office in West Palm Beach. He also has experience serving as our state attorney right here in the Keys. Mark, thank you for being on the show with me this morning. Thank you for having me. Mark, let's talk a little bit more about your experience throughout the years. Okay, well, uh, I started off uh, right after I graduated from a small college in South Carolina called the Citadel. I went to work for the state attorney's office up in West Palm Beach. I was in the, uh, started off in the mailroom, worked my way up to the assistant to the office manager. I went to law school while I was still working there and came back to the state attorney's office as an assistant state attorney. While I was in law school, I participated in a uh, program that allowed interns to practice law at the state attorney's office. Mm -hmm. And I have about two and a half years as, uh, um, as an intern in the state attorney's office handling cases before I ever passed the Florida bar. So mm -hmm. while I passed the Florida bar in 1984, I had about two and a half years worth of experience before I ever became a lawyer. Mm -hmm. And that was a, a really good thing. I also continued on in the West Palm Beach state attorney's office handling juvenile cases, felony cases, um, I left the state attorney's office up there in 1985. Uh, I tried about a year and a half in private practice with my, uh, my father, who was a criminal defense attorney up in West Palm Beach. and mm -hmm. We didn't get along too well in, in business, so mm -hmm. I came back to the prosecution side. I mm -hmm. sent out my application to a number of state attorneys throughout the state of Florida because I wanted to be a career prosecutor. And the state attorney down here hired me. I came down to Key West in 1987. Mm -hmm. In 1989, I got transferred to the Upper Keys where I managed the office up there and handled all the felony cases, and I mm -hmm. stayed there until 1995. In 1995, I tried my hand in private practice again, mm -hmm. and in 2000, I ran for and was elected the state attorney here in Monroe County. Mm -hmm. um, I was the state attorney for eight years until 2008, and since uh, 2008, I've been out in private practice, and now I'd like to go back to being uh, a prosecutor. And I'm hoping that the voters will uh, will reelect me to that position. All right. Now, Mark, you have said that you're running too because you feel that the prosecutor's office needs ethics and experience back. Can you be a little bit more specific with that? Yes. There's been a number of things that bothered me about what's been going on since I left the office. Um, the communications with the press on things that uh, the National District Attorneys Association says are things that should be avoided by prosecutors things like discussing the facts of the case, um, discussing plea deals, discussing statements by defendants. These are all things that uh, the National District Attorneys Association guidelines say are things that should be avoided by prosecutors. Mm -hmm. And the current state attorney's office has been you know, having those kinds of discussions with the newspapers, and, and it bothers me. Mm -hmm. yeah, a lot of it is very unfair to the individuals that are involved in the, in the litigation. Um, there's other problems that go on at the state attorney's office. My belief is that there's a lack of supervision that has resulted in a backlog of cases. Um, these are things that need to be addressed, and that's the reason that I'm running for state attorney is because I think the state attorney's office needs to be basically put back together. Mm -hmm. I think it's started coming undone since I left. So what would be the first thing that you would do to put it back together well, the, if you were elected? The very first thing I would do is I would bring in some experienced prosecutors. When I left the office in 2008, uh, my successor got rid of the most experienced individuals in the office and his idea was is that these young attorneys could be paid more and therefore they would stick around a little bit longer. And it was a nice idea, but what happens is you lose the experience factor. And what he did when he took over the office is he gave the raises to the younger people, but they don't have the experience. And without that experience, it creates problems and, and what you really need are supervisors that have the experience and not just one or two of them you need a number of them and I believe that's what's caused the backlog of cases here um, if you look at the statistics the number of cases that are being closed out by the state attorney's office right now has gone down dramatically since I left office mm -hmm. and you may not think that it's a big deal but it does become a big deal mm -hmm. if you take in 100 new cases this month and you only get rid of 90, you only close out 90 of them, that gives you an extra 10 cases, which isn't that bad. But next month you get another 10 cases, and the month after that another 10. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the year, you've got an extra 120 cases that you shouldn't have. Mm -hmm. Now, those are just numbers that I'm pulling off the top of my head. The numbers are actually significantly higher than that. I believe the closeout rate is somewhere in the 70s, 
right now, whereas they were in the 90s back when I was the you know, state attorney. Mm -hmm. And what ends up happening is that your assistant state attorney's caseload goes from a couple of hundred to you know, five or six hundred just because they're not closing out the cases. Mm -hmm. And the, I think the biggest problem right now in, in addressing that I would address as soon as I got in is bringing back supervisors that know how to help these young kids, number one, work their cases, mm -hmm. and number two, supervise them to the point where they actually start closing them out. Mm -hmm. um, as the cases are delayed, that doesn't do anybody any good. Um, witnesses tend to forget. Witnesses tend to move away. Sometimes they die. And if the case is sitting there just getting older and older and older for no particular reason, that's a bad thing. You know, justice delayed is justice denied. And I think that the citizens, citizens of Monroe County need to have somebody in there that's going to make sure that the cases are closed out and handled appropriately so that they don't drag on and on and on. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you, Mark, for being on the show this morning and sharing this. And hopefully the citizens of Monroe County get out and vote this election. That is the most important thing. I hope mm -hmm. so, too. Thank you. All right. Thank you. I'm going to take a quick break right now. I'll be right back after this commercial break. Please stay with me.